Charles Will Akwabi, a former governor of Awaibom State, has finally emerged as the president of the 10th Senate and has already been sworn in after intense politicking between himself and other members of the APC who also wanted to have that exalted position. It was very tense at a point that people thought that he will never become the Senate president, but eventually he pulled it out. And who are those who are opposing him? You have the likes of Ojuz or Kano, Calway, former governor of Abia State. And those that is now saw a former national organizing secretary of the All Progressive Congress. Those are the people that we are also angling for this important third position in the Nigerian political setup. But one particular candidate stood out, and that was Ablaziz Yare, former governor of Zamfara State, who had insisted on running for the office of the Senate president despite the stance of the APC. It is not very clear whether Izunas and Ojo Kalu finally withdrew from this race because they didn't say that publicly. They didn't announce it. They went into this election, but I think something happened in the house. But Yari stood his ground till the last moment, and he got about 46 senators voting for him while about 64 voted for Akbabio. And this Senate presidency brought out the political divide in Nigeria because there has always an attempt to balance things a bit to accommodate the religious uh, hues that you have in Nigeria. The president is already a Muslim. The vice president also a Muslim. And many people reason that it is important to have a Christian, at least, to be in charge of the Senate. Otherwise, it would be a completely Muslim affair from top to bottom. And some people who are very reticent and um, uncaring about this political balancing and importance in Nigeria insisted like the Yari of a man who is also a Muslim felt that it has to be Muslims all true. In fact, the vice president was pushed to say that considering the political situation we have in Nigeria today, that is important to have a Christian as a Senate president. And many people also misconstrued that. Eventually, Yare was left in the cold. When Akwabio won this position, he was left alone. As the video showed him, he was really, really alone and painted such a sorry picture. But I'm going to tell you something about uh, Goswell at Pabio in a while. But let's also look at Senator Jules O'Connor. What was his own contention? And he said that he is an Igbo person, that the Southeast needed to be represented in this government. He has been very friendly with Tinubu from what we saw. The Hobnob, Tinubu visited him during the campaign and all that in his home. But the feelers from the South East is that this Carlo has never really cared about the interest of the South East, that he rather was using, uh, uh, using the South East as a stepping stone to help himself. That is all about himself that he's talking about. When he needed it, he remembers that he's from the South East and he is Igbo. In fact, during the validatory session at the Senate, Carlo broke down in tears. And you know what? The Igbos, they know their own, but they're also very callous when the situation calls for it. I, don't, I didn't see any single Igbo man sympathizing or empathizing with Senator Joseph Carlo. They said, you, we don't care. You can cry me a river. We don't know what you're talking about. 
That is the callousness of Nigerian politics. And now, at the end of the day, he has lost it all. That is what happened today. Goswell Akpabio, it is. And this Akpabio has got some baggages on him. And that is one thing that I don't quite understand about Nigerian politics. But before I go to that, let me also inform you that in the House of Prayers, uh, the rape Abbas has also emerged as the Speaker of the House. He is Tajuddin Abbas. He has been declared the Speaker and is all done and settled. He has been sworn in and is now time for action. So let's come back to Goswell Akbabio. Because one thing that baffles me about Nigerian politics, which I can never, never fully understand, is that these people have so much baggages and they still keep rotating themselves and getting these positions over and over again. This man has been accused so many times and still they keep electing them and he is now the Senate president. He was under investigation by the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, on accusations that he diverted less than over 100 billion naira from Akwaibom State during his time as governor from 2007 to 2015. In fact, some American diplomats called that level of corruption as exceptional. However, we must admit this, no charges have been filed. And how is it possible that he accused somebody of 100 billion uh, Naira diversion and no single charge has been filed? The money is simply too much. Could you just imagine, let me just assume that everything is corrupt. Somebody stole 100 billion. If you bring out 1 billion and give you to seal the file and shut up your mouth. What are you going to do? I'm not saying you can take the money and forget the case, but just think about it. What are you going to do? In fact, a lawyer, Leo Ekmenyon, who also accused this same Akpabi of corruption, was later arraigned by the police in court for defaming Akpabi. And in May 2020, this same Akbabio was summoned by members of the House of Representatives over the misappropriation of another 40 billion naira. The same man. If you do not know, a lady came out and accused this same Akbabio of sexual harassment. A very senior woman. Nothing happened to Akbabio. Sometimes there was uh, audio circulating that this Akbabio told some people to go and bomb pipelines so that he would get certain, uh, 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 certain thing he wants from the government. Nothing happened to Akbabio till today. I will leave you to be the judge. This is Nigeria in 2023. Goswell Akbabio, former governor of Akwaibum State, a senator, is now the president of Nigeria Senate. He is the one who will work with Bola Ahmed Tinubu. Two of them tainted by bribery, allegation, or corruption by EFCC. None has been charged. None has been tried. This is the latest. And um, we will bring you more as things develop. Let's see how he is going to do it. Please like this video, subscribe to this channel because we bring you breaking news all the time, round the clock, every day. Thank you and stay blessed.